Okay, so this first critique is for Ahad Alavi. Um, these are pretty nice drawings. I like the way you're approaching these in a simple manner. You're showing the simple forms, um, you know, especially in the, the eyes there. Good simple forms of the brow, simple forms of the eye and the brow there. And then even when you go on, get onto the neck, you're thinking of them as simple cylindrical forms all the way through. Um, sometimes though, it's, it's feeling a little bit stiff, especially in the two female ones in the middle. Um, these look like they're probably, you know, skinny, um, elegant female um, characters. And so the neck has to be elegant and flowing as well. And I feel like some of the shapes you're putting in there are stiffening it up. They're too, um, too blocky. So like in here, for example, the sternomastoid. It kind of looks like it goes down and then straight out like that. You got a really sharp angle. Same thing in here. Look at that sharp angle. Think more of an elegant swoop coming down like that. And another one like that. And then you got the clavicular head that comes out from there. And then the trapezius comes out from that. And then also the throat part, this little triangle that you have in here, the part between the sternomastoids, that's too big. And it's also too big in this one as well. That's a big, really big throat for uh, a skinny female. And so I would say this whole area in here would have to be sternomastoid. And I wouldn't indicate it really strong in there as if they're flexing because that would you know, as soon as you start adding a lot of detail into the neck, it starts to age the neck, it starts to make it more masculine. And so I'm mapping in all the shapes, but if I was to start shading all of this, I would definitely keep it subtle. But this is the placement of the sternomastoid. Um, elegant, curving around the neck. In here, same thing. So you got this one, so that's good. Elegant curve. But then the throat, I would probably bring it in a little bit like that and then curve this one probably make it a little bit thinner as well and then bring this down make that neck a little bit longer like so let's move on to Thomas Grames okay so here it looks like you did a drawing from my simple forms drawing um, a few things so first of all, the head is too small, um, and I think you're still copying lines instead of thinking of form. Um, so maybe uh, maybe you need to do just a little bit more uh, basic studying of like Loomis head, studying the, the robo bean of the body, that sort of thing. Thinking about real complex areas like the neck right now might be a little bit too early because you're still having um, a hard time drawing a cylinder with, with a jaw attached to it. Um, like this, the structure of this head is, is flat. So you need to start practicing um, drawing cubes in perspective, that sort of thing. But uh, basically, you know, bigger in the, bigger in the head here. Uh, and then look at the way you're indicating the cylinder of the sternomastoid. You gotta really indicate the cylinder. Like, look at these little dashes you have all along right here. Those dashes are, they actually have a purpose. It's, they're not just supposed to be little dots like that. Um, the whole point of it is to show the roundness of the cylinder. So let's imagine that sternomastoid as an actual cylinder kind of coming down like this. And it's coming towards us a little bit, so we're going to see the bottom plane. That, that bottom cap. So imagine like a Pringles tube. And then at the top, you'll just see a curve like that. So see how that looks like it's coming towards us? Um, these lines that I have, this one and this one, wrapping around the cylinder, it, it's almost like a marching ant or a rubber band going around it. And that helps to show the, the form. So I'm imagining a rubber band around it. 
It has to be clean. It's not enough to just kind of go through and put little dashes like that. That actually hurts the form if you just kind of put little lines. Um, think about what the purpose is of each line um, instead of copying my lines. And then even in the cylinder of the throat, you see how each one of these is parallel? And actually they get a little bit wider as they go down, but yours, you have a really wide one and actually with a corner and then you have um, have them straightening out as they go down. That's kind of the opposite. Because as they go down, they get more and more away from us and we're starting to see more of that cap. Yeah, think about the how that rubber band is gonna wrap around the cylinder. Don't just draw lines. And then in here, look at the, the way you indicated that contour. Simplify it. Simple rhythm. You want to be accurate with it, but you also want to keep it simple and rhythmical. Um, and I'm not quite sure why you added that little that bump in there. I don't think that was... I don't know. Maybe I think that's just um, sloppiness or something. So that's that one. And then you have another... So these are all simple forms. So that's good. I'm glad you were doing some of these. But yeah, right away I could see that you need to practice uh, simple forms more because you're having a hard time imagining things in 3D and you're having a hard time drawing all these forms in the right proportion. So like, for example, this one is really long um, and that jaw is really uh, flattened. So this, this head needs to be wider and then the, the neck would be a little bit shorter, something like that. This one we got way too much space in the back of the head and not enough space in the front. So you got to extend that jaw out. Something like that. Maybe a little bigger. Uh, yeah, something more like that. This one, the neck is way too big and the head kind of seems flattened. So I would add a little bit more to the top of the head. And shorten that neck like that. This one down here um, looks like the, the chin or the jaw is deformed. So bring it out. And then probably a little bit bigger in the neck. Okay. So keep practicing these simple forms. I think this is what's going to help you the most right now. Not studying all the little intricate muscles that are in there because you're not going to be able to draw the intricate intricacies if you can't draw a simple form of the neck okay so keep practicing these okay let's move on to yimbo zoo um so first of all the the perspective of the head it's a little bit top heavy i would probably extend that jaw out a little bit more something more like this um and then this extension that you have back here for the the back of the head is coming out a little bit too far um, and then a little bit too curvy and coming to a point on the sternomastoid try to imagine the uh, the tips of these the sternomastoids as little tendinous like um, cylindrical tendons like little like a straw that you drink from it's very thin but it's still a cylinder and it's going to be straight like that I mean, sometimes it can curve a little bit, but it's not going to be like curvy and kind of coming down to a point, like a word bubble or something. Um, so try to give it a little bit more of a solid feeling to it with some cylinders. So other than that, I feel like you're approaching this in a good way. Um, you're probably just having a few issues with proportions. So, you, you know, you just got to develop your eye a little bit more. Um, and also try to draw a little bit more from photos or from life, um, instead of from my answers. Um, I, I know you're, you've probably got the premium course and you're drawing from um, my drawings of the photos rather than just drawing from the photos without looking at my drawings. Because I can tell that you're basically just copying my lines. And the problem with that is that I've already solved it for you. If you're copying lines, you're just drawing lines. You're not actually drawing the forms and you're not analyzing what you're seeing on the model. 
So I really recommend that before you copy my lines, you try to do it on your own. And then you check my drawings, you check with my drawings to see how you did and make corrections to it, maybe do another second drawing. And when you submit these, show both of them so that I could really see uh, what you're having a hard time with. Because when I look at these drawings, I don't know what you drew because you knew the form and what you drew just because you copied my lines. It's really hard to see what you understand. I mean, these are good, you got all the muscles in there, um, but again, it's the same exact lines that I put down it's just that the proportions are a little bit off. Yeah, watch out for, for how you're studying because, yeah, I think studying smart is sometimes better than studying hard. You can spend, you know, a few weeks just copying, but it's not going to be as good as spending a few days really, really studying smart and, and analyzing the form as well. So you can save yourself a lot of time and a lot of struggle by studying the right way. So let's see, Audi Eagleheart. Submitted these nice drawings and actually has a question. It says, Oh man, the sternoclavicle muscle is hard to distinguish under the skin. I'm not sure if it's supposed to bulge like its sternum buddy or if it should bend slightly inward. Oh, okay, so you're, part, you're talking about the clavicular head of the sternomastoid. Uh, it's kicking my butt among other parts of the neck. Cool. Okay, so yeah, if, is it supposed to bend slightly inward or is it supposed to bulge? It depends on the pose. So sometimes, like if somebody brings their neck out, these guys really come come forward. So you know that that head flexes. Um, in a relaxed pose, it curves inward. So it really depends on the pose, depends on the action of the neck. That's why it's so important to understand uh, the function, is so that you can um, you can invent these muscles to be active when they're supposed to, but also so that you could look at the pose you're drawing, you can figure out what muscles are active and you'll be able to see the forms better on the reference that you're looking at just because you understand their function better. So let's look at your other page here. Um, let's see, yeah, uh, make sure you think about the angles of the jaw. When you're drawing the neck, or really anything, it's the bony landmarks that need to go in first and they need to be constructed well. Otherwise, the whole, the rest of the drawing just doesn't have any structure it doesn't feel solid if the bony landmarks aren't accurate so that yeah this the bottom of this jaw just felt like it was kind of melting it didn't it was just a little too flimsy um, so adding these side plane front plane side plane in the right perspective is definitely going to help um, i feel like on this one the the sternal head is a little bit too small and the clavicular head is too large so, like i would do something more like this, like that. Straighten it out a little bit. The other side looks pretty good. Maybe coming out a little too much like that. It'd be nice to show a little curvature of the throat this way, like that. And then, so then the, um, the sternum acid coming around the corner blends in a little bit softer in there. Uh, this one, sternum acid looks really nice. I like it. Good, clean shape. Feels nice and cylindrical. Um, it's just this area that feels a little bit too thick. Um, so, you know, just, just bring it in a little bit. Just got to push everything in more. On uh, this one, things are feeling really nice. The only thing I noticed is that the clavicular head of the sternomastoid is not symmetrical. See how, look at the connection right here to the clavicle? And then this one, much longer. So you're not attaching them to the same points on the two sides. And so see how this one feels like it's going out this way, and this one's going in this way? Maybe good for motion, uh, but it does feel asymmetrical, and so I would, I would definitely fix that. But other than that, nice drawings. Could be a little bit cleaner, but pretty good. And looks like that's it, you guys. I'm excited to move on to ARMS. Um, thank you for everybody that's been participating in the torso course and submitting. Um, I hope more of you guys will submit with the arms, um, do the homework that, that I assign in each lesson and submit it into the Facebook group because I really like looking at all of them and I like giving you guys feedback because um, it you know, shows me that these lessons, you guys are actually using them and practicing and improving. So, you know, please, if you haven't, if you've been afraid to submit, you don't, you know, you're not sure if you want to be exposed on the, in the videos, 
um, don't be afraid. I mean, we're all here learning. It's good to learn from each other's mistakes. So, you know, do your homework, submit it to the group, um, and let's all learn together. So, so I'll see you guys in the arms course. Bye. So we have a premium section for students that want to learn more. The premium section has extended lessons with more information about the topic. It also has additional drawing demonstrations. If you do the assignments for each lesson, these demonstrations serve as the answers for the assignment, so you can check your work. There's an ebook version of each lesson that you can download as a PDF. Print them out or keep them on your device so you can quickly review the lessons. And finally, the premium section has 3D models that you can spin around, study, and draw from any angle. If you don't want your drawings to look like this, go to proco.com slash anatomy. If you like this video, don't be all selfish. Share it with your friends. And if you want to be updated about new videos, click this button or go to proco.com slash subscribe.